Hello and welcome to the Dad and Daughter Cooking Show. I wonder what we're going to have as a theme today. You know what eggs are called? They're called nature's perfect package. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So this whole episode is going to be on eggs. I'm making three different, a little bit complicated egg items. You're doing sophistication. Very, very simple. But, but you're really doing more the science of eggs, which I appreciate. Yeah. You know, really the science, right. sort of the best way of making yeah. a scrambled egg, because people don't know that. I know they don't. I know they don't. And then um, you're going to make a sort of, quote, perfect high-end omelet. Talk a little try, bit about I'm folding and doing. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm going to make something Spanish and then two things Mexican with eggs, but very, very, very classic. You can hear right now and smell. My dad has already eaten hear. a whole bunch of this, which <laughs> is the potatoes. He doesn't know, though, that there is a little bit of garlic in here. I'm not eating that. So the first piece that I'm going to demonstrate is uh, tortilla española. And I might have shared this on another TV show in the past, but we just thought it was so significant with eggs that we wanted to share it again, the tortilla española. So it's classic from Spain. Anywhere you go in Spain, and I'm usually in Spain a couple times a year, you have this classic tortilla dish. Generally, it's made with potatoes, onions, a little bit of garlic, and, of course, the eggs. Generally, it's served at room temperature. It is actually not a breakfast thing. You may have a piece of tortilla for breakfast, but it'd really be like a little snack before. A tortilla and a salad, a tortilla mm -hmm. as a tapa with a glass of wine, or a tortilla as an entree before you have your main fish course. This is mainly potatoes, though. Right. Potatoes, you can't see it in there, but there is garlic, and yeah. there's also onion in there. Now, yep. I'm going to do it freestyle, where I'm actually doing it in this frying pan, but I ordered this from Spain, and you can see the size. This is an actual tortilla pan, and they use these in Spain. It's not like it's cheating. But it really is cool. So if you end up liking this recipe, you can buy these and you can buy them smaller. So if you think about it, it's a frying pan with a top and a lid to it. You can buy them here in the U.S.? You so can. Oh, yeah, like Amazon will sell it. Not everybody's going to go to Spain. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you can take your, um, again, your mixture of your potatoes and your onions and garlic, and you saute it in here till it's really pretty much done. Then what we're going to do next is we're going to add the eggs to it. I'll demonstrate with this. But then you would put it in, you would take it out, which I'm going to show here. You put it back in this pan, and then you clip it, and you put it on your burner until the bottom part is done. Why this is foolproof is then you're ready to tip it, Yeah. and it okay. tips over, yeah. and you do have to do that. So I'm going to do that live with a small frying pan in a little bit, but first we have to get it going. So talking about eggs, Dad, what kind of eggs do you buy? I buy white eggs, very inexpensive, and the Egg Council says there is no difference nutritionally between white or brown. Okay, okay, yeah, I would agree with the white or brown. Um, I'm still into brown eggs. Overall, I buy brown eggs, and overall, I also buy really high-end eggs. Dad always teases me, and I always tease him too, but I do have to say that the eggs that I buy really do taste very, very, very good. Now this, just so you know, while I'm doing this, you don't want this brown, so I'm actually going to turn it off at this point, because you do not want this brown. There's going to be another dish that I'm making on the potato show, and that's where you want those potatoes crispy. These you want golden, but um, not brown. So for this size, I'm doing about three eggs. I would say these are on the larger size eggs, medium to large. Yeah, they're large, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll give you that because I know you're going to crack some eggs later, too. Thank you. So now I'm going to take the eggs nicely in here. You can see the yolks. They're a beautiful yellow color. At some point, we should maybe compare them to my dad's white eggs. Because my eggs are high-end eggs, and I eat a lot of eggs. I'm, I'm not a sole believer in organic. He teases, but I do eat a lot of eggs. These are two brands that I buy. Give them a little promo. This one I find at Whole Foods. And it's the name of the farm, Vitel Farms. They come in three different categories, and they're expensive. It's like $3.99 for a dozen of eggs. Oh. I know. This is another brand that I think is also very good. I see these Sendix, I see Pick and Save and so on, Eglin's Best. Yeah, those are, you can see this wrong. So I buy these, and mm -hmm. I do not buy the organic ones. The organic cost about a dollar more. I find that I don't need the organic ones. I think they're very mm -hmm. good quality. And then just something fun, I have a very dear person that's a friend of mine and works in our office and she actually has chickens and has quail so she every once in a while gives me quail eggs oh. that's a hard-boiled one and so I just brought them along because I thought they were so much fun and sometimes I do a little tease if I'm having people over for something and I say how many eggs do you want and they'll say well I'll have two 
and then I'll get my quail <laughs> yeah. eggs out and I'll break them and give them two little quail eggs and they go, okay, okay, I'll, if that's the size, I'll have five of them. Do quail eggs taste about the same as regular eggs? They do. They do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very first time I had quail eggs was in Peru and I just thought, wow, these are so amazing. So I've got my eggs going, my potatoes nice and hot. I'm going to cut some parsley. I generally would use flat parsley. My dad has the curly parsley and that's fine. But a little bit of parsley also goes in here. Okay. Whisk that around. Put my whisk over here. Now I am going to... Now you kept talking about Spanish. Oops, Spanish. I need this. a... Um, but is, is, hot pad. Does, does Mexico have something similar? Or? No. No, oh. this is Spanish. The other two egg dishes I'm making are Mexican. So you mm. actually add the potatoes right in there. Make sure you get everything out on the bottom because you don't want it to stick. You're going to put it back in the same pan. Yeah, well, the crusty stuff is what's good. It is good, <laughs> but it really shouldn't be that crusty. I'll grab a spoon from below here. I'm going to give it a stir. And? Olive oil. Da -da -da. Olive oil, sir. Thank you. More olive oil in here. Quite a bit, because you don't want it to stick. And then you're going to put it back in the pan. And um, since we're tight on burner space here, I'm going to use my dad's stove and back. And hopefully, hopefully this will be done in time that we can flip it and you'll be able to have it. So again, this would be... Um, another, uh, uh, the Italians call it and others call it frittata, oh, but this okay, is yeah. officially uh, tortilla spagnola. And then again, you're going to flip it, and I have the official tortilla pan that you can get here, but I did bring back from Spain, that you serve it on. And so again, you'd see this at bars or restaurants with the tortilla on it, served mm -hmm. at room temperature, maybe with a dome over it. So hold on a minute. You do it with a fork, right? You do, yep. I mean... Okay, hey, let me get the burner over here going on medium high. I'm going to flip this guy over, and then I'm going to get my sauces going, and then I guess I won't hog the whole show, and I'll let my dad do a few things. Well, what I have to show is it going to take very long, and it's not very interesting. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, then why are you even doing it then? <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're making two kinds of sauces. One is, wait, whoop, one is, make me big enough? Yeah, there we go. One is huevos rancheros which is going to end up being a fried egg and then a spicy sauce that you put on top. Very classic Mexican. Yeah, yeah, Mom always loves that. Well, a lot of restaurants serve that too. So Yeah. And um, that's I, going to be with a nice tomato. Again, you don't have to go to Mexico. No. No, as a matter of fact, we just had it in, in, um, uh, in Sheboygan the other day. Yeah. Remember I ordered huevos yeah. rancheros? Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tomato, which is nice. Fresh tomatoes, obviously no canned tomatoes for this. So I'm going to chop up a tomato. Obviously from your garden. This was from someone's garden. It wasn't mine. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was actually from Jenny and France. They grew some tomatoes this yeah. year. Well, so I got tomatoes that. were good this year. There was a good season. So I'm going to get my tomatoes good season. chopped up. And, you know, if you want them real small, you can do them real small. This is somewhat forgiving. Okay, plus a little bit of onion. These are some beautiful Peruvian onions that I found. And they're actually called Peruvian onions. But I would say you could use Mexico. They use white onions. So white onion, um, I would not use a red onion for this. You could, but I would generally not use yeah. a white well, onion. Again, you don't have to go to Mexico. You can use, a, you can use right. USA white, white yeah, onions, Yeah, I'm right? just saying that in Mexico, yeah. the onions that they use, when they say onions in Mexico in any recipe, would be a white onion. Yeah. Where in other countries, it might be something else. If I could have a little bit more of that olive oil. Thank you. Make sure that. Okay, let me turn this puppy on again. Let me get this sauce going. Yeah, we'll get it going sort of on the high level to keep it going. So this will be the sauce that we'll end up putting on top of the fried egg, which I'll maybe even be frying while um, my dad is doing some of his stuff. So onion first is always your sort of main thing you put in first. Yeah, you get a little saute a little bit first. Yep. Kind of take I need the onion out. for something else. And then peppers, whatever you like. So I brought along three, four different kinds of peppers. Talk about those a little bit. Your classic jalapeno pepper. This is a red pepper that are usually larger than jalapenos, not spicy, not piquant, but a nice flavor to them. These are called apple peppers, also mm -hmm. a wonderful flavor. And these are another pepper that are not hot at all, but lots of flavor. They're always that size? Yes, about the size. These more of, of an ethnic grocery store, these any grocery store. And then someone gave me this, I just brought it to demo, haven't used it yet. This is one of those killer ghost peppers. <laughs> Probably like this much would make it really, really, really spicy. So I just yeah. brought that for demo. I want to want, don't even want to touch my hands with it right now. Get the um, spatula out. 
Okay, so you can hear the tomato, the onion sizzling. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you want. They've already sort of changed color. Yeah, you just don't want to brown them, right? Yeah, you do not want to brown them. This is what's called sweating, right? Sweating. Yeah. Yep. Sweat the onions. You know your terms. So for this, I'm going to do a little jalapeno because I know that somebody in our listening audience and our viewing audience today, my mom, Carol Bauman, is going to enjoy these huevos rancheros, and I don't want to make it too hot for her. If I were going to do it, I'd put in the hot one. So a little bit of that, stir, and now I'm going to add my tomatoes. Should have one of those nice containers that puts them in there nicely. No, I know you told me, but th this would be made basically served as what? This would be breakfast. This would be Huevos breakfast. Huevos rancheros, okay. yeah, yeah. You maybe have it for lunch, like the other day, again, when we were in Sheboygan, I had it for lunch. Turn it down just a little bit. And then your last ingredient is cilantro. Again, you can find this anywhere. This is the yeah, most cilantro. popular yeah. spice in the world. It really? Latin America uses it and Asia uses it, cilantro. Oh, they do a lot here. Too. Right. Yeah. Um, and cilantro is interesting, too, because some people actually have an issue with cilantro. It's like half the population likes cilantro. The other half, cilantro tastes like soap in their mouths. Oh, oh. No, no. It really, yeah. it's, it's a really real deal that's just sort of interesting okay. on that. So we've got that going, a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. I like to use Berlin sea salt, it's my go-to salt. And actually in Mexico too, and for huevos rancheros, you use regular pepper. Even though you've got the picante pepper, you still use the regular pepper. What do you mean the regular pepper? Well, like black pepper. You yeah. Know, I, put, I put already a jalapeno. Like pepper from a shaker. Exactly, okay. yeah. So that is really good to go. So I'm going to put this over because later we'll serve up. And that's your huevos ranchero sauce. So Good. again, a little something different. Good. And I'm doing one more before you go, so don't get excited. Whoa. So again, we're going to put this on top of the egg in a minute. While he's doing it, I'm going to fry my egg. I'm going to hold over here. Something's cooking over there. Yep, which is good. And that's my tortilla, and that's coming along just fine. Okay. Okay. Now, the next sauce I'm going to make is called um, huevos motileños. And it has many of the same ingredients that huevos rancheros have. But the big difference is that it's a sauce, and you break or poach the eggs in the sauce. Hmm. Okay, a little bit more complicated type of deal. Need a blender for it. I so I take see. my beautiful tomatoes. In this case, I'm actually going to even use the tomato that I didn't use for the huevos, that little top part, because in this it's going to be fine. Throw it in. I'm going to throw in, I'll throw in this whole jalapeno pepper. And, of course, you know with peppers, the seeds is what makes it hot, and the ribs. So if you want the flavor of a jalapeno, but you don't want the heat, you don't put the seeds in Take or the, the ribs. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to throw that in. I'm going to give it a little bit of flavor of this pepper here, mm. um, which is just a real soft, suave kind of flavor. And I could have this all um, chunky if I wanted in the sauce, but I'm going to make this sauce a little bit smoother. I'm also going to put a little chunk of uh, onion in there. Raw onion, but the sa sauce will saute in the frying pan later, and it'll basically cook itself. So I'm going to just chop that a little to make it easier in the blender. And then this is something that a lot of people don't know about, and they go, really, is this this? And they, you're just saying it differently. This is cilantro. This is culantro. Yeah. Cilantro, you can cook with it, like I did at the huevos rancheros, but cilantro is also used fresh. Culantro, you would not use fresh culantro you cook with. So this would be for making a stew, making meats, that kind of flavor, but similar flavor to cilantro. Is this available at most grocery stores? No, this would be ethnic grocery store. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to throw that all in there, throw a little bit of salt. When I do the recipe, the other little secret sassy ingredient that I use sometimes is I'll put a little bit of a bouillon cube in there just to give it a little bit more of a flavor. So I'm going to blend this next. Okay. And then I'll maybe let my dad demonstrate if he'll right. right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got wet hands here. Yeah. Come on here. Let me try it again. Yeah, I don't want to. No, it won't work unless you do it. There we go. I just had it wet hands. So blend this up. The old shake. It's time that you do it. There we go. That's enough. 
Now again, the two different versions you can do here, my tortilla is coming along nicely. I'm going to put this here. The two different versions you can do is if you wanted it a little bit of chunky or you wanted a combination, you could saute your onions, saute your peppers, have those more chunky, and then put the sauce in. I want this to get just a little bit hot, and I'm going to pour that sauce in, and then I'll maybe let my dad talk a little bit. I don't want to. <laughs> Okay, and my dad goes, whoa, this is a blender. It is. It's that a great, is a blender. It is a great blender. Okay, I'll pour that in. Okay, and we'll let that just sort of sizzle up. And then in both cases, later when I serve, I will serve the huevos rancheros and I will serve the huevos montileños um, on, a, um, um, on a tortilla, a nice hot tortilla just to have that flavor. So I'm going to wait till this starts bubbling, and then I'm going to drop in a couple eggs. So now I'm going to let Dad talk a little bit while I tend to some of the things on the oven because of timing. Okay? So it's all yours. This is so basic. Um, <laughs> it's contrasted to what you've been doing. That's okay. It's different stuff. It's basically how to make a scrambled egg, which I think a lot of people really don't know how to do. It sounds simple, but it's not that. Well, it is simple, yeah. You scramble the egg. One of the tricks is to put a little water in with the egg. See, that's like a, the secret ingredient that makes the difference between an okay scrambled egg and a really good scrambled Maybe egg. Maybe one scram one egg and probably a, a, a scant teaspoon. As simple as that. And then the other trick to make it a nice scrambled egg is to stir it constantly with a fork. And what you're going to end up with is fluffy scrambled eggs, as contrasted to a <laughs> scrambled eggs, right? Yep. I'm with you. And that's all it takes is a little water, because what here. the water does is the water steams the eggs and makes them fluff up a little bit. I've got this uh, diffuser on here because the pan doesn't fit on the little burner. I use this little fry pan so often, it works out perfect for making a fried egg also. And just while we do it, you can note my eggs are poaching over here in the motileño sauce. So it's doing exactly what they do. Yeah, Once I have good. this in here, I'm just going to put a little fresh pepper on them. Pretty oh, soon yeah. I'm going to flip my tortilla, put a little fresh salt. I like to cook, a, put some ingredients on where they're there. And for motileños, it's optional, but a lot of times they put peas. So I have some beautiful fresh spring peas in here. I'm going to put on top, too. I'm going to save a couple for garnishing last minute. I maybe okay. put a little bit you too much going. water in here. I don't know. Get my fried egg here. Yeah, they're a little bit on the pale side, so. Anyhow, the idea is to add some water, to steam it, and um, do it with a fork so that the eggs are fluffy. I can't say not stuffy because we're not talking about a candy bar. nice. Okay, I'm going to break two of the egg yolks because I like my egg yolks Fluffy broken. Fluffy scrambled eggs. Absolutely perfect. Okay. okay, you can go into your omelet. Put it here. That's fine. Well, that might take a little while. No, no, what I want okay. to do is uh, you can have a little fun with eggs too. You just don't have to do something. What I've got you probably never seen a chicken that laid a square egg. But there we got square eggs. I made deviled eggs out of that, out of them. Or what you can do is take your square egg and make slices, which look real nice for the kids to eat or anybody else. More importantly, put it on a the salad. They really look nice on a salad. So now everybody is asking, how do you make square eggs? Well, You have an egg cuber. It's a little machine. And all you do, it's not really a machine. Oh, let's see. There we go. You put your hard boiled egg in. What you want to do when you hard boil your eggs, you want to cool them, but still have them a little bit warm before you put them in. You put this on top, and you just there you go. Here's one. I'm going to take it out. 
There's your square egg. Okay, that is pretty cool. That does wow the audience. Perfect square egg. Now, you say, where do you buy an egg cuber? <laughs> it's probably a good idea to buy two or three of them, if, especially if you're going to make a lot of deviled eggs. Or <sighs> I've had these for about 10 years, and the price tag is still on here. It's $2.99. I looked it up on uh, Amazon, and you can buy them at Amazon. It's called an egg cuber. They're $6.99. So the price has gone up a little bit, but even at $6.99, they're a fun thing. You can wow your, your friends, enemies, whoever. Yeah, you but I remember the cubers. kids. You know, I remember you you know, teasing the kids, you know, square well, it's chickens. not even the kids. I mean, to this yeah. day, if I do a salad or you serve deviled eggs and they're square, everybody says, oh, you take the egg and you trim it, you cut it. No, you don't. You use the egg cuber, and they really <coughs> work perfect. Okay, before you do your omelet, I'm going to well, do my first. Well, I don't first... think I'm going to do the omelet because we don't have that much time. Well, how much I'm time gonna, do we have? I'm going to let you finish up here. Well, no, you got time to do your omelet. Okay, so I'm specifically doing the egg, um, how I don't like it, which would be runny, but that would be huevos rancheros would classically be done a nice sunny side up egg. And I forgot my tortilla. Put that down. <coughs> so you'd heat your tortilla up, and we'll sneak this so one under. So they would be sunny side up. Yeah, sunny side up would be the classic that. I always like my eggs fried really hard. I always say totally fried, totally done, yeah. totally dry, like the sole of a shoe That's for me. That's what I like it too, but yeah. And here's our huevos ranchero sauce. So I'll put that over the top, and I'm going to give this to my mom. Plate, we? Oh, I just thought it'd be cute this way, and I'm going to yeah. give it to mom. You know, you can, of course. Well, it's more of a portion size. Yeah, one egg. A little bit of fresh cilantro on top. And then okay. one other thing that you would serve on top, too, of huevos rancheros would be a little bit of queso fresco. So and what is that? Uh, it's called fresh cheese. Um, it's, uh, hmm, what would it be like? Cottage cheese? No, no, no. Um. Mm. Well, it's called queso fresco. It's a very fresh kind of white cheese. You can get that in regular grocery stores. Okay, that's, okay, that's queso always fresco, a question. You can. You got it does not look lovely. So that's going to be for mom. No, it does. Huevos rancheros. So you'd eat that just that way. Yep. And then I will plate up the huevos motileños. These are some cool tortillas here. I'm going at those. Okay. Let's show off my eggs still here. And you can see how these, again, are poached, and you can make these very well done. I like mine more done, so these two are more on the more done side. Put them right on top. And what is this called again? Huevos Multileños. Multileños. Turn this off now. Give a little bit more sauce to it. And these are just oh, so good in my mind. Mm. And I always make a big, big batch of huevos motileños, so I have the sauce for later. The sauce is even good with meats and chickens and things like that, too. Queso fresco, again, on top. You can get that in the dairy counter. Mm -hmm. Yep, queso fresco. A little bit of fresh cilantro. That's K-A-S-E. Queso, Q-U-E-S-O. Oh. Queso, which is cheese in Spanish, fresco. Okay. Okay, so those look nice. So two mm -hmm. different versions, similar ingredients, but again, two different versions. Are we done with this? Yeah, you can just leave it out there. Come up with the tortilla pan. I'm going to show that to the audience, and then I'll get my tortilla out. Okay. So last is the tortilla. So you keep talking to the audience, Dad, while I plate this. Uh, I was going to do a cheese omelet, uh, which is really easy to do. You put the egg in, and then I run a layer of... Um, uh, Shredded. Oh, that looks beautiful. Forget what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. no okay, no. so here's your That's tortilla really española. Nice. So yeah. again, not hard. Okay. And I did this by hand, you know, where I flipped it. Um, it's okay to be a little bit brown like that on top. You just want to make sure when you are doing your potatoes that you don't brown the potatoes because they should be soft. This is warm right now. I know both of us are going to have a piece after the show finishes. Maybe my mom, too. You eat it this way? Or yep. Or there's no sauce or anything on top, nope. right? Nope. Just eat it like this. Yep. Uh, eat, should it be cold, warm or cold? You can either way. Overall, the tortilla in Spain is served room temperature. Room temperature. Yeah, room temperature. He's all ready for a plate. There you go. Yeah. I think our time is up, too. Okay, well, almost. Let me finish this part here. Okay. They're not going to kick us off. It's not like the Oscars. We're going to, music is going to play. There you go. Very so nice. two Mexican versions, one Spanish version. 
classic how to make the um, scrambled eggs really better by mm -hmm. adding, again, that salt yeah. and that part and fluffing them up. Yeah. Really, really fun, the square eggs. Yeah, root fun. Yeah. yeah, and then just, and again, I just let's finish just your tips on omelet, just sort of good go-to best practices. I'm just going to lay the egg in there, uh, do a row of um, shredded cheddar cheese, and then put a little Parmesan, and then wait till the eggs get a little crusty, fold it over, fold it over. Beautiful. Nice. Okay, so you do two folds with it then, generally. I do two folds. Okay, yes, and you have to nice. have the right kind Not of... Not just one fold. Right. You have to... Yeah, that's a different version, which is nice. I like the two folds. I've had yours well, before. Well, it just looks a little nice. It does. Um, it's like a little pocket, you know? Yeah. And then you have to have the right kind of frying pan. I mean, again, the the uh, more this one... Well, that one, that one over there. Okay. Let's just do that because frying pans are really important. If you get a frying pan that's not the right size, or well, this size one... would be for uh, t two eggs would do it very nicely. Okay. And it gives you enough room to fold it over. Mm -hmm. This one would be a little bit too small. Yeah, generally I make this in a bigger pan, but I generally do more eggs, and it's a little bit deeper. But this was fine for the three eggs. And if you're doing the huevos rancheros, you can do numerous eggs at the same time and then plate also. But those look really pretty. Well, this is a good out. egg show and it's not even Easter. There we go. And eggs are a great source. Uh, know, of what? Protein. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Try good eggs source. in a different way and we'll yeah. have all the recipes at the end of the show, too. Thank you.